Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results. And they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. Over the summer, I've read several articles referencing student performance results this past year. Schools were in a constant state of change during the COVID pandemic that unfortunately is still front and center in our minds. I live in Florida where the state results came out several weeks ago, and in many states they've come out as well. So I've been really looking at those results all throughout the states. And the results indicate that There's a significant decrease in student performance results in almost every area. I think we're seeing that trend across the country. On this podcast, we've interviewed superintendents in school districts where we didn't see the downward trends. So there are some bright spots out there that we need to learn from. But for the most part, the student results are trending down. As I reviewed the results, I connected it to a great book I read this summer by Adam Grant called Think Again, The Power of Knowing What You Don't Know. The book challenged my thinking, so I'd like to share some things with you today to see if it maybe challenges you a little bit. The timing of the book is perfect to help us challenge our thinking to shift away from allowing COVID to be an excuse for declining student results. I admit, when I hear leaders say things like declines were to be expected based on the circumstances, you know, I get a little frustrated. I'm hoping for responses like this to families. As we review the results, you and your child deserve better. We acknowledge that we've faced a difficult year. That does not excuse the declining results for our district. We are highly focused on improving student performance results, knowing we cannot continue to do the same thing we've done in the past and expect to get better results. We've worked this summer studying the data and making improvements so that we can provide the best quality education for your child regardless of the learning environment. I appreciate you entrusting your child's education in our district. We're committed to providing your child with a quality learning experience. Yeah, that's what it would be nice to read and hear. I know that educational leaders and employees worked harder than ever, making a very difficult transition. And I'm appreciative of their work. My goal in this episode is certainly not to criticize. I'm asking us to stretch our thinking as we reflect on our actions. That's what all of us need to do, regardless of the type of organization we're a member of. I spend a few minutes borrowing from Grant's thoughts in his book to frame how we can rethink how we do things on our team. As Grant sets the stage for the book, he suggests that when we think about being mentally fit, we focus on intelligence. That's natural for what we do. We focus on how smart people are to solve complex problems like the COVID pandemic in our schools. Grant pushes against that notion, stating that in a turbulent world, there's another cognitive skill that might matter more, the ability to rethink and unlearn. Yeah, rethink and unlearn. Think about it. Once we hear something and accept it, we rarely bother to question it. Grant tells us that Part of the problem is cognitive laziness. We prefer to hang on to our old ideas because it's too much work, isn't it, to press against them? We put the accepted idea in our brain and then we just move on. Sometimes we're emotionally connected to an idea. When we are so connected to a thought or belief or the way we do things at work, we hang on to them for dear life. It's comfortable to do work that way. And it's a lot of work to challenge something that feels comfortable. It makes work too unpredictable. It forces us to do things differently. When something works, we want to keep doing it, but how do we really know it's working? How do we constantly reflect and improve? COVID forced us to change the way we do things. As we look at these student performance results, I wonder if we will push ourselves to rethink and unlearn. When we made the changes last year, did we take what we know and apply it to a changing circumstance or changing the circumstance? Or did we unthink and unlearn what we've done in the past to make changes for what's ahead? 
Are we constantly asking questions to discover new answers for problems we've not had to face before? I don't know the answer to these questions. It sure feels like one to explore. And we continue to face obstacles going into the new school year. Will we do the same things we've done in the past? Or will we challenge ourselves by rethinking and unlearning our old ways to make different decisions? Grant tells us that rethinking is a skill set and a mindset. It's worth learning this new skill, rethinking. And here's what's key to this change and getting good results. It's people's behaviors that need to change. You know, an organization doesn't change, people do. And Grant starts the book in chapter one with a discovery from one of his colleagues years ago. It sets the stage for the book. He shares that as we think and engage in conversations, we tend to fall into three mindsets. First, we go into preacher mode when our beliefs are in jeopardy. And we deliver sermons to protect our belief. Or we go into prosecutor mode when we recognize flaws in other people's ideas. We promote arguments to prove them wrong, to win our case. Or we go into politician mode when we're seeking to win over our audience. We campaign and lobby for approval for our ideas and our ways. Grant states the Risk is that we become so wrapped up in preaching that we're right, prosecuting others who are wrong, and politicking for support that we don't bother to rethink our own views. So what's the solution? Grant encourages us to think like a scientist, where you doubt what you know, are curious about what you don't know, and refresh your views based on new information. Scientists run experiments by testing hypotheses in experiments. And from doing so, they gain new insights and knowledge. And as scientists, we don't start with solutions. We lead with questions. Thinking like a scientist means being actively open-minded. We intentionally focus on how we could be wrong. We continuously revise our views based on what we learn. Grant tells us that the purpose of learning isn't to affirm our beliefs, it's to evolve our beliefs. Grant continues to set the stage by saying, the process of rethinking starts with intellectual humility or knowing what we don't know. We question our own understanding by becoming curious about what we don't know. We've heard that knowledge is power. And Grant says, if that's the case, then knowing what we don't know is wisdom. Back to our dilemma with declining student performance results as we continue to face the COVID pandemic. And many of us have gained knowledge about learning over the years and in many instances, that knowledge has been powerful. Today, it's not enough. As we go into this academic year, let's become scientists to learn more about what we don't know. We need to lead with questions. Our society will rely much more on wisdom, knowing what we don't know than on knowledge because our individual knowledge is being challenged. We've been able to survive by having a preacher, prosecutor, and politician mindset. And consequently, we've seen too few circumstances where people have helped educational systems thrive and continue to sustain results over time. We've seen too few of those circumstances. Our world is calling on us then to be scientists, to gain the skill of unlearning to rethink, to gain the skill of unlearning to rethink. Doing so takes personal courage to lead ourselves and others through discomfort. See being uncomfortable as a natural state of unlearning and unlearning is where we focus our attention. It's much more difficult to unlearn something than to learn something. Our educational business is now about unlearning. Be curious by leading with questions rather than solutions. Here's what I mean. A typical question we may have asked during when students were moving from face-to-face -face educational setting to online learning is what can we do to ensure all students are getting the same educational experience in a virtual world that we provided in school? Now here, we automatically assume students were getting a good educational experience. We accepted our solution as the right one. 
And when we communicated our plan, we may have used a little preacher, prosecutor, and politicking mode. What if we started the COVID change with this question? As we are shifting from a traditional learning approach to a virtual environment, how do we know that our actions will produce the best results for students? How do we know our actions will produce the best results for students? Asking this question naturally places our teams in an improvement mindset. We will determine the measures that matter, monitor our actions against those measures, and continuously make changes as we evolve our learning. And by doing so, we become highly engaged in providing the best learning opportunities for our students that will improve our results. And we intentionally shift people's way of working from cognitive laziness to energized learner. And the best news of all is that most people in our educational systems want to contribute to students being successful. And that's what gives them purpose knowing they've made a meaningful difference in the lives of students and their families. And going into this year, let's focus on unlearning to continuously improve ourselves, to improve our organizations. It's healthy to question and challenge our current thinking and to focus on what we don't know. And when we do, we get better and better at our craft. Students benefit by engaging in a high-performing learning experience that prepares them for a successful life. The accountability of results no longer drives our actions. Rather, improving our craft by evolving our learning drives students performing at the highest levels. That's our purpose. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. Look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.